Hi guys, I'm Kelsey Danielle and welcome back to another video. Before we get started, go ahead and do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Come on, go ahead now. I'll wait. Give me some time. Alright, now let's get into the video. Take two. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have my boyfriend with me. We are going to be talking about a long distance relationship dating. Hope you guys are ready. Hopefully it won't be too long. But he talks more than I do. I'll put that out. But anyway, okay. We're going to go ahead and start. The first thing we're going to talk about is how we ended up in a long distance relationship. Because for me... I would not have I would not have chosen to be in a long distance relationship, and I don't think really. No, I, it wouldn't have been like if like if I I live in South Carolina and he doesn't. Um, if I would have met him when I was living here, I probably wouldn't have. So, don't you give the people a little bit of backstory? You're saying you live in North Car uh, South Carolina. Obviously, I live in North Carolina. It sounds like it's a long distance apart, but really... It's really not that far. Where I lived in North Carolina, where you live in South Carolina, it was actually about a 15 to 20 minute drive from each other, even though it was two different states. Yeah, so then I didn't consider... Okay, so I'll start over from the beginning. When we started dating, I was in school. I went to Winthrop, which is in Rock Hill, and he lived... Rock Hill is in South Carolina. He lived in North Carolina, but where he was staying was... 30 minutes at the most um, from my uh, campus. So I really didn't consider that long distance dating because I was literally 30 minutes up the road and I would text him and say, hey, I want you to come get me today. And I'll pack a bag and be on my way. Um, but after I graduated, I was trying to find a job in Rock Hill or in Charlotte that would pay me enough to um, pay me enough so I could, you know, stay in Charlotte, not in Charlotte, but stay in Rock Hill, pay for an apartment. But I just could not find anything close to Charlotte in Rock Hill, nothing. Um, and I was supposed to, was that when I was supposed to have a roommate? I think you had a roommate at the time. But... I had a roommate in school, but I can't remember. We were trying to find a place together but we were just graduating from college and nobody had credit and neither one of our parents wanted to co-sign that's what it was and then we couldn't find a place to stay so i ended up coming back home to south carolina which was an hour and a half from where about an hour and a half from where i lived in charlotte yeah um which was very different for me because i don't think i've never been in a long distance relationship i don't know have you no, I haven't. This was really like the first long distance relationship. And even though an hour and a half really isn't that far of a distance or a drive, it's not the same as, you know, being able to see someone every day or every other day and go pick them up to get something to eat and whatnot. You know, it was really, uh, you know, weekends only pretty yeah. much, um, which was which was fine for a while. Um, but you know, things I think at the beginning it was like, okay, I could do this. Well, clearly I, I can still do it because we're doing it now. But in the beginning, it was just like, okay, no problem, cool, we got this. But then after, at least for me, after maybe maybe like six months, I don't know if it was shorter, but after a while, I started not getting tired of it. But I wanted to be able to do stuff because my friend would be like, I'm going on a date in the middle of the week, and she like, I'm going to dinner, and I'm like, well, listen. I guess I'll just go home and do some homework because I can't do that. Um, I guess, I, I don't know, is that, is that jealousy or just, I don't know. I mean, it was, I an, just, it was an adjustment, you know, it, it, particularly for both of us. You know, we were both so used to being able to reach out, touch each other, you know, call each other, you know, anytime. We didn't really have to, to plan out anything. It was just like, hey, let's go get something to eat. Let's go to the movies. Let's X, Y, Z. And it was, you know, pretty easy to do. But once you move back home uh, here, you know, we had to plan more. We had to be a little more diligent. We had to 
find ways to communicate and, and kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. What do you mean you don't? Okay. But I think another thing that made it harder, when I was in Rock Hill, I was, he's older than me. So when I was in Rock Hill, he had a, like, I had a little weekend job, but I think I worked like maybe two weekends a month, maybe one at the, two at the most, most of the time, maybe one. Um, I didn't work any weekends, now that I think about it. I worked during the week. I didn't work weekends. So, um, you know, weekends, I just, you know, it wasn't like I had to figure out, like, do you work this weekend? Or can we do such and such on this day? Like, what's your schedule? What's my schedule? It was pretty much like as long as... I was free all the time because I mean it was either homework or I'm going to hang out with him so when I came home I had a job so it wasn't like if he was off during the middle of the week it wasn't like I could just like okay I'm gonna go up and see him I had a job so we both ended up having to figure out how we could still see each other and spend time with each other and call each other um, and still you know, keep it going. Because his, I worked, I still work 8.30 to 5. But when we first, when I first moved home, you had a late shift. Oh, you, yeah. were, you were still at the Coliseum. Oh, yeah, I was working. Uh, you're right. I did work a little bit later. Um, but that's really what, what the video is about, right? Like, we're, we're here to kind of give you guys our story and kind of tell you kind of some of the the landmines that you need to navigate if you're going to be in a long distance relationship what are some of the the tough things about a long distance relationship what are some of the the nice things about it and um some of the things that's helped us kind of get through not being able to see each other um and um even now i haven't seen you in what three months like three months not because of the distance it's because of the rona that's why I haven't seen Rona took me out. Yeah, Rona is what took, uh, put so much time between us. Um, but I'm going to ask you a question. We wrote down some questions. Well, it was his idea to write down questions, so I'm going to give him his credit. But um, I'm going to ask you, and then I'll answer, of course, too. What do you think is the hardest part about um, long distance? Really? Oh, and it, by the way, he moved further away, like at the beginning of this month. So we're now basic. So we're now four hours apart. So that's really long distance half. now. Because yeah. now when I when I do go to him, I have to figure out where. Because I'm not. I can't do the four hour drive in one day. I, me and driving four hours is not gonna happen. So I have to figure out um, where I'm gonna go Friday night before I get to him. Because I'm doing half the drive Friday and I'm gonna take the other two hours the next day. It's four hours. It's not that long. I don't. Mm -mm. I get sleepy after two, and that's when we gonna stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but go ahead. The hardest well, part. What do you think the hardest thing is? I think the hardest part about it is just not being able to kind of get up and see you whenever I want to. You know what I mean? And um, you know, really just coming home from a long day at work. You wanna? Hey, you just wanna. Tell your girl to come over or, you know, you go over there and y'all just chill and talk and play cards and read and, you know, just, you know, create a vibe, you know, just like a couple's vibe at the end of the day, you know, and not being able to do that, you know, having to FaceTime all the time or use some sort of technology to see each other. Um, it's hard, especially with us, because all of our communication, at least 90 percent of it is virtual or, it's, mm -hmm. or you know, through the phone. Um, and it's really hard when you start out a relationship. Not that way. Not that way. You know, we started out seeing each other. We basically, you know, like she said, oh live 30 minutes away from each other. We saw each other all the time. And then happened to literally one day, it went completely the yeah. opposite direction where she was an hour and a half away and just not being able to, to reach out and, and kind of be with each other whenever we wanted to. It was definitely an adjustment. Um, so for me, that's the hardest part for, for me, just not being able to see you whenever I wanted to. That is the hardest part for me too, um, especially when I have, have friends who have their significant others or friends or whatever they choose to call them here, close to them, and they have the ability to just say, hey, you know what, I'm coming over, I'm going to cook dinner, we're going to have a game night or just do random stuff, just Netflix and chill and all that stuff. We can't do that. So 
whenever she does do it, I do get a little jealous. Um, and I do get in my feelings, which is probably most of the reasons that we've had, not, not arguments, but I'll have like a little sour attitude most of the time when I feel that way. Uh, I don't think I ever told you that. What? Sometimes when I become not, I don't like, I'm saying all kinds of crazy stuff when I, when I be sad, not sad, when I be in my feelings. But I never tell you why, because like, sometimes I don't know why, but then I realize it's because Kayla told me. And y'all know Kayla, she's in my other videos. Um, that she would be going to do something with one of, one of her guy friends or whatever. And I'm like, dang, I wish I could. And then I just have this little horrible attitude the rest of the night. Because I can't do what I want to do. Um, What's one of the things that, like, has helped us through the long distance like I'm sure a lot of people want to know if you guys can't see each other every day what are some what do you do what are some things that you guys do to kind of make sure you're connected and kind of make sure that you're still um you know spending quality time together even though you're not together um what's I know one thing we do is we do uh we do read together yeah. so like I'll order a book and I'll order two obviously one for her and one for me um so we've done that before what, what are we reading right now I wish I had the book in here. Uh, we're reading Mike Todd's uh, Relationship Goals. Yeah. I actually, uh, I'll, I'll admit, I have not started the book yet. Um, well, I have started a little bit, like the first few pages. But you got your book before me for some reason. So you were able to start earlier than I was. But I got to catch up for sure. So that's one of the things we do. We try to like read together and then we'll try to like talk about it. You know, talk about um, what, what we read in the book and how we interpreted it. Um, she's, how we can apply it to ourselves. How we can apply it to ourselves, our relationship, to our life, to our family. Um, she's really big on uh, Bible plans as well. So like she'll like pick a Bible plan um, that we all, that we both can read. Um, and we'll talk about it and figure out how we can apply it to our relationship and how, you know, it helps us uh, in life. and. In Christ as well. What what's some other things we like to do to I think one of the biggest things that has helped us is scheduling, even though it will be nice. Like I really love surprise pop ups. Like um a few years ago when I first moved back, we went to me and my family went to Myrtle Beach for Thanksgiving and he couldn't go with us because he had to work. He he somehow he um of course he had my dad's phone number but he ended up contacting my dad, and as soon as we got back, I think I had, I didn't even have time to unpack. I brought my bag upstairs, and he was at the door. I like stuff like that, but now we can't do that. Um, we have to plan stuff, and that has helped a lot. And then I think knowing what each other needs to feel that we are like having quality time together has helped a lot too, at least for me. Because I know for me, like quality time, this is not. To me, this is not quality. I don't care if you're in the same room, same house, watching TV with me. I don't You Put your phone down. I don't like that. And I've told him that because I feel like, um, you know, we don't get to see each other all the time. So I want 125% of his attention. And I've told him that and he has done a lot better um, with that since I've told him that. And I know what he needs. He likes this right here. And I'm not a very touchy person anymore. I don't know why I used to be. You have a bump right here. Um, but I try to make sure that I show him, you know, touch him a little bit so he knows that I care about him. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so kind. Oh, and surprise, like, he'll send me, and I need to do better with that. Um, but he does very well. Like, he'll send me, like, little, not little, but he sends me flowers. They're white, so I don't know if it's hard for you to see or not, but I like, um, he knows my favorite flower is a white, are, are white roses. So occasionally he'll send me stuff. Um, or I'll come down and put together a desk for her, like I did yesterday. Yeah. And this chair that you're sitting in. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that too. So my biggest, my biggest <coughs> tip for that question would be to learn what your partner or your boyfriend or girlfriend needs for them to feel like your time is being spent productively or whatever you quality quality what's the word quality time 
Yeah. To feel that your the time you have together is being spent quality. That you have quality time together. Goodness. Um. And then planning. Well, that, I guess that goes with the same thing because he's fine. Well, I don't know. I'm not fine staying home all day. Like if we can go somewhere, we can go to a park, we can walk around in the mall. Like let's go do something. I don't really want to stay home all day. So knowing that your part, what your partner likes to do, stuff like that, will help too. Now let's let's talk about <clears throat> one of the things that a lot of couples do struggle with because. You know, obviously we've told you guys things that you can do um, that, that's going to help the relationship, that's going to keep you guys, you know, connected, even though you're long distance. But let's let's get to the nitty gritty. Let's tell the truth here. Things can get a bit hairy at times, you know, when you're not with the person, you know, uh, you know, long distance or you're not with the, the, your significant other and you are long distance. You know, uh, fellas, it's, you know, let's let's keep it real here. I mean. Those those things do start creeping in your head. You know, you going jogging and you see a little chick, and she, you know, telling you how good you look. You know, that does creep in your mind that man. You know, you might think that you could take advantage of a situation in your girl's long distance. I'm gonna tell you right now, don't do it. Okay, don't do it. You know, men by nature, we're you know we're you know the flesh weakens us. You know what I'm saying? We see a fine girl, she all looking good. You know, your girl is four hours away and, uh, you know, you, you want to please the, the flesh. You know, those doubts are going to creep in your mind like, man, I can go do this. I can go do that and she won't know about it. But one thing that uh, I I'll always tell anybody in a long distance relationship is anything you do in the dark, it will come to light. That sounds like a cliche thing, but it's it is true. cliche. But, but think about true. this: one thing you always want to think about is what would happen if she found out some of the things that you were doing behind her back. And would you be okay with it? Well, who'd be okay with it? Like, would would you be okay with her response? So, if something, if if you know, he's not, I don't think that he would do that at all. But if he were to cheat on me and I found out, he would have to be okay with whatever my decision is to do with that it would it would be my reaction so if i chose not to date him anymore because i feel like i can't trust him because he cheated he has to do with that whether he wants to or not so think about that and that's for women too there's a there's a book that i read it's called the truth about men by divine franklin i'm sure y'all heard of it uh, i mean in the book he talks about you know whenever you are contemplating potentially stepping out on your mate always play through the consequences in your mind first you know, I, again, I'm, I'm a man. I've definitely, you know, thought about it, you know, but one thing I've always done is I've always played out the consequences in my mind. Like, all right, if I do something that, you know, would embarrass Kelsey or something, or if I did something that would, you know, break her trust, you know, I, I, I played out in my mind how that conversation would go, how that reaction would go, you know, do I... I play out how hurt I know she would be. That's probably the biggest thing. Like, I know how much that will probably just destroy and hurt her. And that's one thing I'd never wanted to, 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 to see or put myself in that position. So um, one, one thing I always want people to know is that, you know, it's gonna be hard and you're gonna have those those temptations, but um, you either gonna man up or you're gonna man down. You know, which one is it gonna be? It's gonna be hard, but uh, you know, definitely those those temptations will be out there, especially when you're long distance, but always just play out the consequences in your mind first. You know, and that's one thing I've always uh, done. Um, anytime some some sort of uh, temptation has crept in, so to speak. So, I ain't no, no temptation crept in. No, I'm just kidding. I'm a man. All men think just, about other women. I'm just, just kidding. Just so you know. I'm just kidding. I mean, you fine and all, but I do think about, you know, new, new Rihanna. Rihanna. Lauren London. No. Um, I know Drea. that. Oh. I was about to say, who is that? But never mind. Yeah. Um, I think a so, and I'm going to just tell y'all about me. My communication. Horrible. 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 It's gotten better, though. Horrible. Horrible. And you would think that I would be a lot better because I want to be a therapist or a counselor. But it, listen, it's horrible. Because I do not like confrontation. So that does not go very well 
first of all, it doesn't go well in any type of relationship, long distance or not long distance, but especially for long distance. Because if I have like this horrible attitude with him and he has no idea why I'm mad and I'm just like, you know what, don't worry about it. I don't want to talk, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to talk about it no more. Well, I'm going to carry that to the next day. He's fine. I'm not. But he don't know that. And my attitude is just getting worse and worse. And he's like, listen, I don't know what you got going on. We need to fix this because I'm not going to keep doing this. But he has made me talk. And now I think sometimes he want me to talk a little less, but it's okay. <laughs> you got better with your communication. I mean, you know, you, you definitely gotten better uh, over the years with it. And it's still, you know, progressing and getting better each day. So. I do thank you for that, because uh, that's major, major, as DJ Khaled would say, a major key to uh, long distance relationships. You got to be able to communicate. You got to be able to tell somebody how you're feeling. Uh, you got to know ways to communicate. Yeah. Like, for example, um, well, you have to know ways to communicate. And then you also have to be OK with the fact that, you know, so for, for prime example, I have a new job. That's why I'm now four hours away instead of one and a half. And my job has sometimes taken me to Texas, to Chicago, to, you know, these places around the uh, U.S. And I don't always have time to, to talk to her as much as she would, would want me to. And we've definitely uh, uh, I've been in a Starbucks drive through in the middle of Temple, Texas, while Kelsey's on the phone yelling at me as to why I didn't call her last night after setting up a brand new hospital um, in Texas, but we're not going to get into that. But yeah, I mean, you, you have to be understanding in ways to say, Hey, you know, I understand this person may not always have the time to, to talk to me as much as they would want or as much as I would want. Uh, but you also have to find ways to communicate that maybe aren't talking, maybe like a text message or send a card, uh, send a card, send a letter, you know what I'm saying? Send them a little five minute video or something. I mean, who knows? Just, just, just have to, Find different ways to make sure that person's um, knows that you're on their mind and they're thinking about you. Um, it doesn't necessarily always have to be an hour long conversations. That's one thing we do try to do. You know, even though I do work late at times and you know our schedules are always aligned where we can talk on the phone or FaceTime all the time, uh, we do try to make it a conscious effort to make sure we at least talk to each other um, in the morning. And at night, even if it's not, uh, you know, for a long time, but, you know, at least making an effort. So I think that's a big one, too. She appreciates it. I do. I think. <laughs> I do. I do have a question, though. Next question. Is there anything that you have learned about yourself from being in a long distance relationship? Is there anything I've learned about myself? Yes, there is something I've learned about myself. I hate talking on the phone. I do, too. Like, that is... Uh, like. I like talking to you, I promise. No, I get what you're saying because I don't like talking on the phone. I don't either. like talking on the phone. Like, I'm just really... sitting here, like, holding, like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't like talking on the phone. Like, I hate it. And, and one thing that has come out of that is that I now know, and that was a communication issue that I have, I, I should have told her, like, hey, Sometimes I don't like talking on the phone to you, you know, not necessarily to you, but sometimes I just don't like talking on the phone. Like we can text and, you know, but I don't like talking on the phone all the time. Um, and it started to manifest itself. Uh, me, me and my, my displeasure with talking on the phone and begin to kind of come out um, over the phone. And she really sensed that. So one day she just like, look, you know, I understand you don't like talking on the phone all the time. But, you know, if you don't want to talk, you can just tell me you don't want to talk i'm not gonna be mad about it so um yeah i did tell him that because listen he can't his face he can hide how he's feeling but his voice cannot so he'll answer the phone he'll be like hello well, oh my gosh like what what did i do to you today you didn't do anything i just don't like talking on the phone sometimes so i just told him i was like you know if i understand you sometimes you have a hard day at work you have a long day I have long days too. All I do is hear people's problems, fix people's problems, get cursed out, get fussed out. I understand all of that. So if you don't want to talk, just say, you know what? If I call you, just don't answer the phone. Text me and say, hey, babe, had a rough day today. Let's just text. I'm, you know, I'm not in a good space to talk right now. Cool. I'll take that. But don't answer the phone and act like you don't want to talk. Just don't answer the phone. Because that, now that's going to annoy me. So just, just don't answer the phone. 
So yeah, that's that's one thing I learned. I don't uh, being in a long distance relationship. I do not like talking to people on the phone. So for anybody who family and friends who's watching this, before you call me, ask yourself one question: Is this textable? <laughs> if the answer is yes, go ahead and hit them text. Go ahead and start composing that text. 140 characters or less, preferably. Ned, what about you? Um, Something I learned. What have you learned from being in a long distance relationship? I learned that I'm a horrible communicator. Period. Really? Yeah. I thought you got better at it. I'm better now. I think I have a lot of it. I I think he thinks I I'm doing a lot better than I think I am. I think I do do better because I will at least say, um, well, I didn't like this or this made me feel this way. I will say that. But if I feel like he's not understanding what I'm saying, and I'm just like, you know what, forget it. I don't want to talk about it no more. Let's just keep moving. Can't do that. Yeah, I know. I'm still working on it. The Lord is still working on me. Don't worry about it. He's going to get there. But that is one thing I learned. And I also learned that I don't like to talk on the phone that much at all. Now, I'll do a FaceTime because I don't have to hold it. I can put my, he bought me some AirPods, so I can just put the little AirPod on my ear, you know, and sit the phone up and, you know, we can just keep it moving. I don't know why I prefer FaceTime over talking on the phone, but I, I just bought you what? AirPods. AirPod Pros. Honestly, I don't know the difference. About $150 difference is, that's what the difference is. I really like them though. Let's see, any other questions? Last but not least. What advice would you give others who are thinking about entering a long distance relationship? Can I go first? Sure. The advice I would give, don't do it. <laughs> give some real advice. That is real advice. I, I personally would not ever enter a long distance relationship. Um, meaning like the person that I'm courting is a distance away before things it. got serious uh, between us and I knew that ahead of time. Obviously our situation were different. We weren't long distance to begin with and then it progressively got longer and longer. But my advice is don't do it. But if you do get into a long distance relationship, um, you have to be able to trust the person and you have to have really good communication skills um, and you can't be like super needy either. Like you can't expect the person to, you know, just stop what they're doing to call you or, or, or whatnot, especially if they are long distance because of work. Yeah. Um, that's really the main thing. Like you just have to understand this is a different type of relationship. But um, for me, I would say don't do it. But if you do do it, take those two keys um, to success and uh, you'll be good. Um, I'm not going to say don't do it, even though I wouldn't do it. Um, what I will say, though, is if you decide to do that, just know that you're going to have to put in a lot more work and a lot more time and a lot more effort than you would if the person was, you know, in the same city or even in the same state as you. It's, you just have to, you got to know what that person needs. You have to know what you need. And then you have to be willing to give that person what they need and figure out how you can give it to them in another state. That's that's really the, the difficult part about it. Knowing what that person needs and being able to give it give that to them with no no regrets, no issues, no nothing. That was good. Think so? Alright guys. That's all I got. That's all I got for you today. <laughs> That's all I got for you today. Thank you for coming out. God bless you. Good night.